I know it's a lot of me talking, but that's because this has been days of me thinking and uh, r racking my brain and just getting any idea I could. Here, you might be looking at that and say, that's not an intake manifold. That looks like a header kit. You are correct. So this is a collector, real oily stuff. So, the plan is, this is actually kind of expensive. I mean, for a custom intake, it's gonna end up not being too much money, but just an intake manifold alone. It's actually about the same price. This is 190 bucks for this. So I'm gonna turn the camera and show you what I'm talking about. To get an intake manifold on this, we first, this is the bottom of the engine. To put this into perspective, listen how crazy this is. This engine is normally sitting straight up, one cylinder stacked on top of another. Already that's nothing like a regular car engine. The carburetors are mounted on the side of the engine because the float bowls and everything like that, it just has to be like that. So this is typically the side, but in, I don't know what the term is, in regular ways of a car, this would be where your oil pan is. So the intake manifold is where the oil pan of the car is. And on the top of the engine where your intake manifold normally is, that's the exhaust manifold that's cast into the block. It is part of the block. And at the very front of the engine, well, it's normally the front, is your flywheel, which is typically found at the very back of the engine where the transmission mates up. <laughs> and your starter's there too, so. Okay, enough of me. Talking, well that actually is important though, so that's important that I told you that. So okay, the next step, what we're doing here. We have eight runners or eight ports or whatever you wanna call it. And this is the bottom, so we're gonna have to build an intake manifold that has each port come up and an injector, a fuel injector for each, every single port. I was originally going to do a carburetor here, but then I was worried about the uneven runner lengths and the carburetor being all the way at the front and it fuel starving or anything stuff back here. I don't know. It was just a lot. I was hurting my brain. So I was like, the best thing for me to have controlled fuel would be an injector at every single port so I can know exactly that each cylinder is getting the exact amount of fuel and then all it is is air. So it doesn't matter how long the tube is because it's just sucking air. At least that's what my theory is. I could be completely wrong. I mean, it makes kind of some sense. Anyway, so these ports are two inches in diameter per cylinder. That's massive. That is gigantic. That's like a big block. So we got this two inch hole saw then we ordered two inch exhaust pipe. So we're going to cut this to the right angles and then it'll come up like this and curve out. And we are going to have two throttle bodies. They're going to go to each collector, just like your exhaust, four tubes per collector. I'm gonna cut this and put a plate. Uh, we're gonna have to go get a little more of this, I think, but we just started with two feet. I'm gonna cut this plate drill a hole in it so it'll be a mounting surface for a throttle body and then we are going to connect the throttle bodies together with a shaft so that they operate exactly together to open up so that will be kind of like that so when you look at the engine in the car the throttle bodies will actually be pointed towards you underneath the flywheel it's kind of a lot to explain and I hope you guys will see it. I mean, you will see it come together, but that's what we're rolling with. So we're gonna get into this. Um, some of it, I might not record drilling every single hole. So I'm gonna show you the basics of each one and then I might do some time lapse just to save your time so you're not watching this for like two hours. But, and my time of editing, my wife's time of editing. <laughs> okay, let's get into end of cutting and at least mark making one of these to start with 
So here's the what I'm talking about. You know, us tracing it. I say when I say us and my wife, uh, she was telling me, man, you say we a lot. Uh, I'm always alone doing this stuff. So when I say we, <laughs> I mean you and me, the camera, you guys behind the scenes, behind the screen watching. So, okay, so we got this gasket, and what we're thinking is we're just gonna trace this on this piece of steel and then drill all the holes out and be left with the mounting surface that what will sandwich this gasket. I think we might be able to get six or eight. I'll be surprised. All right, I need a new marker. Be right back. It's trash. Well, I found a, I found a red marker, so uh, it's not what I wanted, but we'll work with it. It's also smashed. They're all smashed. My wife says I press too hard. See, and we might modify it because I can see that this doesn't contact too much here. I don't know if I just want to make that whole thing. Okay, so there we have the first one. Looks like crap and you can hardly see it because all they have is red markers. Well, only one red marker. Let's open this baby up. Brand spanking new. Something like this. I wonder how critical it is that we get it all like pinpoint accuracy. I mean, that looks pretty centered. See, I just pushed really hard. Okay. Tape measure, we broke them all. I don't even have a ruler. Wait, I do have a ruler, I know where. Nope, no ruler. Okay, so this is the only tape measure I own, and it's broken, and now this is the only drill bit that I can find in the entire house, or shop, house, property, oh, there's two more right here, so these three, so that's going to have to do, okay, time to see if this is centered, sure, looks about like one inch to each side there. Mint. Mint. Now where's a drill? Oh God. Okay, I found a whole thing of these drill bits and this baby was in my attic this whole time. Who knows when I bought it, I forgot, but uh, score. So now what we're gonna do, clamp this puppy uh, down. And drill that hole. Damn, it's already covered in stuff. I used it and put it away dirty. Wee wee. Man, I mean, it is dark over here. I need more lights. I can't see any of these markings. What the sauce? Oh, boy. Way off. And that is pretty accurate. One time when I was a kid, you know, my dad uh, used all his tools. He has a big drill press, big, a big one. I was cutting a quarter inch plate of steel like this. Uh, I actually have the piece of steel is for my wheel horse, my 1965 wheel horse. Uh, like a bracket for the plow. Cause I lost the original. So I was duplicating the other side cause they're the same. And one second, I need full focus for this. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. See, I start talking and I. Oh, well, anyway, anyway. So I was drilling it, and the drill bit caught the steel and ripped it out of the clamps, and it came and hit my collarbone so hard. And I was the only one. I don't even know if anyone was home. I was like, I was like oh, God. And I was like, imagine if it would have been an inch higher and just sliced my throat. Yeah, I was probably like 12 or younger. I was in the grass. I'm gonna die, guys. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but here's what we'll do I'll hold this roughly where it needs to be. Put slight. I don't know, dudes. I'm just a guy. I mean, 
it's almost there. Oh, wait a minute. It's good. Once it breaks through this, it's gonna screw right into this. Maybe I should have it on a piece of wood or something. Okay, I'm back. I got my government issued hearing protection. So it better work. This can's like out. Come on. Time to mount this baby in this vise so we can cut it. So I'm trying to think what's the best way. Something like this, and cut and such, or. And guess what? I actually know where the cutoff wheel is. I'm gonna take you with me. So, like I said, my tools and stuff are just always all over the place. Well, I moved a car that's been sitting for like a year, and when I moved it, I saw it in the back. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you. Yep. It was in the sausage pony. So if we walk all the way over to this car. Oh, almost fell in a hole. Open this baby up. In the back, I found tools. We're gonna have to come back to that grinder. got this saw and I used it the little bit on this and it broke it literally stripped the threads off this and shot this with the blade across my shop like it's just junk but this is at least cut enough that we can just move it back and break it off yep just did it so now I'm gonna clean that up just this one has already taken me like an hour, but that's also with finding tools and figuring stuff out. So hopefully once this one is done, we can speed this process up to at least half an hour, 20 minutes or so. I thought I just filmed me uh, cleaning this up and I went to stop the recording and it started to record. So you guys just missed it, but I did a bunch of grinding on this, just trying to clean it up. What not. So let's go over to the engine here and put it on and see what we got. All right, so we're just gonna pick one random port. Oops, sorry. I'm trying to look and film. This thing's still hot. Let me take this bolt. There is plenty of extra excess material or whatever. So you can see right here even, if it'll focus is overhang there, overhang here, which is fine. Oops, sorry, I'm, what the heck, where am I at? <laughs> then plenty there, so. But the main thing is this port in here, I mean, that's like spot on. Now we need to do seven of these. I think it's been like an hour and something, I don't know, it's like 1040 now, so I think it took me an hour and a half to make one. And we're gonna stick with this. This is a good, I like where this is at, so we're just gonna duplicate it. All right, I'll show you. I'm gonna put this on the other piece of steel and paint, paint it. And it'll leave an exact outline 
And I'm just gonna do that and keep painting these. Then I can just cut them out one by one. Now in theory, I should just pick this up. Oh, look at that. Cut everything that's not paint. I wonder if staggering them or I wonder what's the best conservative. I'm gonna do it like this because I don't know if you can see, but right here it has a nice triangle so I can use it as a gusset later on and just save all the metal we can for future projects. Oh my god, I'm an idiot! Yep, and of course. Okay, maybe I should do two at a time. Dude, I don't know what I'm doing, man, to be honest. I thought it was a good idea, but that one's slightly off center now. Maybe I should just do one at a time. Okay, we'll roll with that. These last, these last two, I can't get the drill press to cut them. That drill press just has no nuts. So I'm using this, it's already working better. I gotta cut the I already brought it over here. But yeah, I was just heating this up. Hopefully I didn't damage it, like damage any teeth. Oh well. Voila! Only one more hole. That's it. thought my idea for this so sometimes I do overthink stuff and I think the idea I was gonna go was pretty extravagant because I was thinking I well I still do need each injector at each port yes but I was gonna do a tube coming up and going into the collector and each tube a runner exactly like a like you'd see a header and it was gonna be really tall like it would the engine would just be too tall and it wouldn't fit because remember this is the bottom so typically your oil pan is actually shallow in one spot and then just has a sump in one but if your whole thing is big the engine won't fit in the engine bay and it would be sticking up out of the hood it looked dumb so i was like man this is gonna be an issue and then i went in for the night and sometimes ideas just hit you like this and it just hit me man i need to simplify this 
keep these plates like I have with tubes instead of coming up and turning. I'm gonna do tubes coming straight up, oink, like this, and that'll still give each injector the ability to, see that's why I'm not doing a four cylinder. You get that. If, you're, if you have a four cylinder V6 with exhaust, put the factory stuff back on, or V8 swap it. <laughs> I'm just kidding guys, I'm joking. But uh, each one will have an injector and then run a straight tube. And then I'm gonna have the straight tube go into a thing. It'll be much more compact, much simpler. And I'm using a MIG welder right now, so I won't have to worry about as much uh, welding burrs or debris in a tube that's bending and trying to clean it out because if it sucks in one metal bur like a little ball of metal it could damage the engine so this way I'll be able to just clean it straight through and then straight through yes it might not make power it might be fine I don't know guys but that's what we're gonna do we're gonna return that which uh, that, that'll be fine because that was 190 bucks for that kit so that'll give us hundred ninety dollars back into the budget and this being straight tubes, we'll be able to do it cheap. So this is my first attempt at trying to cut a notch in this. Uh, this is what I got. And we're gonna see if it even works. So I have no clue. I, I mean, this might not even go far enough down. I've only got two inches. That's what she said. So I just built this, who knows if it'll work. But it is so hot, man. All I can think of is that Christmas song that's like something about chestnuts roasted on an open fire, I don't know. But all I can think of is, that's not chestnuts you're smelling, that's my nuts roasting because it's so hot. Oh wow, look, I built this and it's totally off. That figure, wonder if I can adjust it. I'm gonna cry. Okay, so this is the pipe you just saw me cut. So I cut it at two and a half inches. That's this pipe here. You're gonna see how it fits. After we get all these cut, we'll trace them on this. Use a two inch hole saw. That's the diameter of this. Cut it out, stick that on there. Perimeter weld all the way around here so it doesn't uh, leak. Eight more of these. We're gonna cut them to go like this. So this tube's just gonna literally stick like that. Whoop, up the front. So now we just need to measure how high up we want it. We're gonna have an injector stuck like that, or maybe even like this, I don't know, on each one of these. Boom, boom, boom. So just need to measure how many inches I want this pipe to be. Probably about like that, maybe two, three inches. I'm gonna measure that and uh, cut this and repeat what you guys just saw at eight. Times. I have decided on two inches of distance between the runner. I don't know what they call them. In between the plate and the two and a half inch main intake tube. So I got a rhythm going. If I measure this two and three quarters inch, and uh, let's see, I got a mark. I stick it under here, the zip tie, and then I slide it like this and I marked on this piece of metal down here, the line, I lined one up. I'll just show you real quick. See that? So I lined that up and then I found this clamp in my garage and let's see how to do this one handed. And I can lock it on like that and that adds a little more so I don't have to hold it just by myself. And then that positions 
this exactly in the same spot, like depth wise, as the other ones. So I can make them exactly the same. And then when that's cut, I measure from the shallowest part here, so the deepest part of the cut, two inches, which is almost exactly, it is exactly on that mark right there, two and three quarters. So I'm cutting three quarters of an inch in and I'm able to make some. I got two of them laying down here. There's one, there's the other one. And then I've got these two over here. This is the original one. And it somehow looks better than the others. So, but we're just gonna make, this is how they ended up now. They're all off cut to the side like that. But we're gonna make them all identical. Since I couldn't get it perfectly centered, they're all gonna be like this in the entail. If anyone sees it, which no one will because it'll be in the bottom of the car, I'm gonna say, yeah, I, I designed it that way. And then you gotta bring it up like this, and then grab this, and bend this part down, and not mess this whole tube up. That is how I do them all. And then take this off. And then they still got the zip tie, so I just slide it like that, and all that metal comes out. Clamp that baby right here. All right, so I measured it. So I'll cut exactly on that line, so it'll leave that one. It's confusing. I straightened this baby out, kind of. It still angles. It's got a curve to it. And that is how I've been making them. So here's three. I just bolted these down and forgot to record it to show you guys. But these are the plates you saw me make. And I'm just putting them on, tightening them down. We're about to put the pieces of tubing that you just saw me cut. We're about to put those babies on also. So we're just clamping these down, this quarter inch plate that we made. Okay, so there's those. Whoa. All right, I'm gonna clean these up a little bit. You can see all this uh, sharp edges and it's uneven. We're just gonna clean them up on here so that they fit down in there nicer and we won't have a bunch of material falling in the engine. Lamb sauce. Okay, so now, there's still some burrs. We'll have to clean everything. So now we're gonna stick these down in there. Something like that. There's four. Let's go get the other four. And four. Okay, and it doesn't, like this one doesn't wanna go much further down. It doesn't matter too much. We'll tap it with a hammer if we have to, just to go down. Because anything that goes lower, we're just gonna plane this the bottoms of them, so it'll be a flat surface, so it won't matter. Plus, even if it does go lower, it's going, it won't affect the gasket, and it's going down in the own own hole. So you see what we're, uh, come off. You see this concept here, and now this tube, two and a half inch outside diameter exhaust pipe will then mount like that and it will be capped right at the back and the injectors will be right here. I'll weld the injector bung and I can only find injector bungs pre-made out of aluminum. So we're either going to have to drill our own, like get some round stock, like half inch or three inch or three quarter inch thick, like round stock and just use the drill press and just try to make them or if anyone knows where I can get them. But anyway, so preferably at an angle, 
here, so it'll come out, so I'll have to cut them. Put the injectors there, boink, 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 and then build a fuel rail for it, and that'll be on both sides. So then I'll move this tube, so you can see where it is here, and then roll this up, boom. So let's see, one second, hoo -yah! Nope, okay, four, Demonstration purposes only, we're gonna remove that one. And possibly that one. Okay, so boom, then you see the second one. So you see these tubes are actually going to be relatively close to each other, which works out pretty good because they're going to be funneled into this. This is a header collector. So you have four tubes that come off your engine for the exhaust. Each tube normally goes in here on your car. This is underneath of your car next to about where the transmission is at. And then your exhaust collects, well, bolts to this. This is a header collector because it collects every one of your tubes. We're going to use this as an intake. So it is going to collect these tubes, both these tubes will go into it and it'll be one throttle body mounted at the front. Why I have it angled down is because remember, this is the bottom of the engine. So in reality, this will be facing upwards like this at about that angle. And then I'm gonna put the throttle body mounted on it so you can boop and boop and see it move. And this will be at the bottom of the engine uh, below your crankshaft. Remember, this is the crankshaft here which is below us, which is then going to be above us, or above the intake. It's kind of diff different than normal, but you can see where the direction we are going. And I believe we're gonna have to go get more tube. We only have 36 inches of this, and we're definitely going to use all of this tube. So we're gonna have to order some, or see if we can't pick any up locally like we did with this stuff. A shop just had that two inch, this right here shop just had that stuff sitting there and i did pay for a 90 degree bend which we might not even use but already going with this design we're returning that exhaust kit that we bought the original header kit which was 190 dollars i had all this stuff i actually bought this quarter inch plate for 15 bucks though so the tube that we might not use that i thought we would was 16 bucks so that's 31 dollars so if I don't use that tube, I mean, this is a $15 intake manifold versus 190 for the material. I know it's a lot of me talking, but that's because this has been days of me thinking and uh, r racking my brain and just getting any idea I could. This is the most low profile design that I could come up with. Keeping these intake runners as low as I possibly could. Yes, it might not flow, anywhere near as good as uh, each runner with a nice mandrel bent tube going to the front or another design, you know, but the thing is we first have to get this to work. After we get the vehicle running and driving, we can then look into more prototypes. But at the moment, we need to build something that can get us rolling and on the street. Next up here is to position this tube and then mark it with a Sharpie and then build a jig, another jig, position this tube then on the jig so that we can drill with a two inch hole saw off center on this tube, like we cut these off center. So that being off center, like I keep mentioning, you can see here how it's taller here, that actually pushes the center line of the tube, instead of being on the center, pushes it in. So that actually worked out in our favor. So each tube is pushed towards the center of the engine, which will help us in turn be much easier to get them into one location, one central location, instead of trying to create big turns of it coming in. I might even be able to just barely angle this. So time to get back to work.
I got the tube set up here in the drill press and I think we've got it pretty good. That's the two inch hole saw here. And we've got these uh, marked out. So we are going to give that a shot. I don't know what we're gonna do when we get, where's my finger at? To right here. We're just gonna cut it, worst case, use a cutoff wheel. But we're gonna see what we can do. Pack welded intake. Jeez, that was rusty. But you can see like that one, I got mint, perfect. And these other ones, gaps, they just progressively get bigger. And I, well, kind of, I thought at first, I was like, oh, is this tube not where it was before? No, it's just my drilling sucked but I did the best I can. So we have it tack welded. Now we just gotta pull it off and weld it up. And the reason why I like this design so much is to clean up welding burrs. Oops. When I take this off, I can literally just go straight through like that, clean it with whatever. And then from the back, I can clean it and then I like cap that. And then we'll turn this down in the front to meet up with this tube. Jeez, I suck at recording. With this tube here, we'll then collect them together whoom, into one. So there's uh, quite a big gap actually. So I don't have any like filler rods, so I'm using this uh, sign. It's stake in the ground and then a sign would go on it here. Someone stuck it in my yard and I accidentally hit it with my mower. So I'm just gonna put it on this two piece, two inch pipe, <clears throat> like this, and then bend it and get it roughly the shape we need. And then we can tackle it and use like a screwdriver and a hammer to stick it in where we want. So we only need three for this side because one pipe's like mint. See this one here ended up, I mean, perfect. Look at that, it's perfect. Down in there, I mean, I did a really good job on that one. But then this one, you're like, oh man, oh my gosh. What in the world? But then they're correct right there. So that's just my drill at my jig, man. You saw the jig, it was the best we could do. So we are going to take this. Looks like crap now, but we're just gonna use it and then MIG weld all around it. So let's get to it. Here they are, 
been welding. I'm using a MIG welder with flux core, no gas. And that's why I'm missing the tip too. Plus it destroyed this thing so the tip doesn't even fit. So, I mean, this is the tools I'm working with guys. Anyone can do this. I'm just one step from do above doing it in my driveway. Yeah, this looks like crap now. We're gonna clean them up. I got this one over here, just alternating, welding on one, flipping it around. I can show you, yeah, this is still hot. This is where I've been filling them. Like I said, when I'm done, I'm gonna make them look as good as I can. I'm not gonna weld these. I'm not gonna weld that yet. I'm gonna finish all this, clean it up even, and then bolt it back on the engine and make sure these are true. Because when I was tapping this, I had welded just like one weld on this, the one weld on that with the to the rod. And I thought when I was hitting that, I thought I saw one of these move and I immediately went and checked it. And it looks fine, but like I said, better safe than sorry. And you can see here, oops, you got that lip, which it does go down in the engine, but we're still gonna try to clean that up and delete that lip that overhangs. So this is completely smooth. And I have a sanding block, which I'm gonna go over and just sand them lightly because I did that on the Fairlanes intake. If you guys, I don't even know if that video is made yet, but you see me do that. And I do it a lot on the thing I built and it was still slightly wavy, but I figured a gasket would cover it enough. As expected we have very mild warpage these holes are just ever so slightly like they're just tight where instead of it going perfectly to the center you could probably beat it on but you damage the threads it's just barely too tight so I'm just gonna drill it to I think this is something 64 so I don't know let me check real quick so we're gonna drill them to 23 64 we had them at 11.30 seconds already, which they're 5 16 bolts. So we're not quite to a 3 8 like the next size up, but. So we're just going to the next size to make a little more wiggle room. Well, that didn't seem like it did much at all. We'll try it though. It's still tight. Oh, this one. I have them right there. Yeah, that one's good. Okay, I'll bring you over here and just show you it. It's not bad at all. See what I mean? Where, see how it's just at the edge? That one's at the edge right there. It almost looks like it might needs to go back, but then see that one's at the very front. It's just ever so slightly. We'll just drill them out to three eighths, all of them. See what that does for us. I got this one bolted down. Now this is the one we drilled out to. Uh, didn't have three eighths, so I did 25 64 which is a step above three eighths. Still doesn't want to go down all the way. It's tight, this back one here. The very back one and the front one, both. These two centers are perfect. Oh, going up another size. Voila, I like got a glove. This takes just regular carb studs. That's what it, it's got like, just like a car, but it only has half of them. So we're gonna go pick up eight more 
and make this whole thing so it's all studs instead of half bolts, half studs. Got a socket and a nice long extension. I'm just, if you remember, I did not weld those plates down here. They're only tack welded on. I'm going to put some heavier welds on them while it's bolted down so it's true to where it's at. So any warping, because if we mess that up, we would have, like if, they're, if I weld them, they get warped at an angle. I mean, we'd have to take this to a shop and have it plain like you'd get like a cylinder head or a deck of a block have it cut to one level surface so we are going to try to get this as good as we can with what we've got and that is the actual engine itself we just have to be very careful not because this stuff aluminum under it not to warp it that's all tight now I'm just gonna go through and look, make sure they're actually flat. A couple of them, I can actually see a gap. Next up is more welding. The cardboard's on fire inside the engine. Yeah. Oh my god, why am I dumb? I mean, lots of other people probably would have seen this coming. Why didn't I block this off? It is hot. I can only get my finger in there. What do I need or have? Come on, baby. This engine might not work due to the amount of metal I put into it. Well, the fire's out, I think, but now we need to plug this. The sparks are flying down in there. And it might happen again just from heat. I mean, it's paper, it's cardboard like packing paper. Take some air out of it so it's squishy. Wait a minute, that's gonna melt. I have an idea. This won't work all the way. There, it'll help deflect some. Some is better than none. Or wait. Yes. There is a storm rolling in fast. The whole shop, the a wind gust just hit it. That right there looks like some dragon face or something. It is so windy. Can't, the camera probably is not gonna make it. This is probably gonna seem like nothing on camera. But it's like spooky, like it dropped probably 15 degrees or more. And this wind coming in is nuts. I'm probably gonna shut this door over here. Oh, look at that go-kart. Boom. One of those things just happened where I realized I'm a moron. I'll turn the camera around and show ya. So I put this tab here so I'm welding so it would just help hold them so that these things don't move too much. So a brace, plus it's gonna be connected up here so I didn't want it just loose the whole way so this was there. So I was like, all right, that's gonna be great. It'll look pretty cool too. So I put it in there, welded it. Well, look. Right above a bolt. I literally could have put it in between them. Why would I do that? Luckily, I think, let me find this wrench. I probably put it away. Luckily, I can get to it with a wrench semi-easy, but I mean, 
if you're a mechanic, you're watching this, and you, uh, we always wonder, like, God, the engineer that did this, that put this in the most awkward spot, why wouldn't they just move it over? This is exactly why. This happens. I'm just shocked. Maybe I'll cut it, move it, probably not. So we need these slightly wider and this, we need to turn this into an oval to fit those two pipes. So we are going to see if we can do that with a hammer. It's actually pretty close. Then we'll trim uh, trim everything up, make it all look better. But a bit more beading. So to help the that header collector keep its shape on the front, it's a three and a half inch collector outlet. So that's our actual intake. So we're going to use this and cut this three and a half inch hole out of this quarter inch plate and then weld it because this is where your throttle body will mount so we're going to weld this plate to the front that'll help it keep its shape and be true so we don't have to keep beating it and it'll just help us in the long run I've been beating this with a hammer, trying to get the shape I want so it fits. And it's much more difficult than it looks. So it actually is pretty close, and I'm wondering if I can't just tap it with a hammer and then get it there, I can just cut or beat it on this. Maybe I should, hold on, geez, yeah, see, okay. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna weld another tab in between here so that none of this pressure is on these. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So that will help us, so we're beating this on. It's not trying to bend and break this aluminum housing. That would, if that happened, I would uh, tie a rope around this engine, put the other rope around my feet, and then drop it in the ocean. This is way further down than I had. In my mind, I pictured it way shallower, like right here, which I would have loved to just chop some of that off. Maybe I still could. Because this is cut, we'll see. But I'm going to weld this base up some more. And then, I don't know, I think this looks kind of foolish, kind of silly looking. You won't even see any of this. You're just going to see this sticking up. So maybe it's fine. You know what? This is the prototype. We're going to leave it this long. We can always cut it. So let's weld some up a bit. This, I think we're gonna have to do a little cut. Maybe not, maybe I can just beat it in. Maybe I should. Actually, I'm gonna use a clamp to try to press it. That way I'm not putting pounding power. Probably a better term for that, but like a shock. Instead of shocking the whole thing, I'll just compress against itself. This is what I mean. Now I can weld it on the back. Got it closed up. Can't see.
Thanks for watching this video. Uh, let me know if you guys want the videos, if you like them this long or if you want them shorter, just comment down below what time frame. This is the longest video we've ever done on the channel. Uh, it was pretty in depth, but if you guys want, uh, let me know if you guys would like me to keep them this in depth showing how I build it or if you just like me to just kind of Shazam stuff and movie mad movie magic stuff just kind of appears and I briefly go over them but we're not done with the intake we're gonna roll right into the transmission mount and get that built now I'm working on that now so that'll be episode two of the engine which is episode three of the entire build so thanks for watching